श्री गौर किशोर दास गौरजी महाराज की जय सप्तम गौ स्वामी सचिदानंद सदभक्त नो ठाकुर की जय वैष्णव सार्वभौम श्री जगन्नाथ दास बाबू जी महाराज की जय गौ प्रेमानंदे हरे हरि मुकुम करो तीवा चालो पंगु नंगे तैगरी यद कृपा तमाम बंदे श्री गुरु दिन तारी में यसाद भगवत प्रसाद यसाद नगती कुतोपी दयाम स्तु वंशस्वीसंध्यम बंदे गुरो श्री चरणारविंद अजनोलंबित बजो कनकावता संकीर्तने कृपितर कमलाय तक्षो विश्वंबर द्विजर युगधर्म पालो वंदे जगत प्रिया करो करो नयावतारो करो भजा राधम बलविंद नेत्र स्मरा राधम बलरास्मित वदा राधम करुणा बदारम तथो मनोजस्ती कृति न का हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई ऑफ माय बेसिस थाउजेंड्स ऑफ टाइम्स द लॉर्ड स्पीड ऑफ गुरु देव निचली रे प्रेस ओम विष्णु पाल सुषमा भक्त राम नारायण गोस्वामी महाराज ओ शाशिक श्री गुरु निचली रे प्रेस श्री गौर गोविंद महाराज निचली रे प्रेस श्री भक्त राम बामन महाराज निचले लपे श्री भक्त राम चिलकम महाराज श्री भक्त राम मधुसूदन महाराज वैष्णव इज वैष्णव इज गेस्ट हरे कृष्ण थैंक यू फॉर कमिंग गुड न्यूज फॉर सम एंड ऑफ कथा फॉर सम वो बी वेरी गुड न्यूज सम वो बी वेरी बैड न्यूज मे बी टुमार मॉर्निंग आल्सो वी कीप गोइंग बिकॉज सदा सैव्या सदा सैव्या श्रीमद भागवती कथा यश श्रवण मात्रे न हरिश्चित मात्रे गुरु महाराज जो सी से नोट हरि कथा मीन्स टॉपिक ऑफ कृष्ण इज फिनिश बिकॉज इट्स वन शुड ऑलवेज हियर सदा सैव्या सदा वन शुड ऑलवेज हियर ऑलवेज हियर इटर्नल श्रीमद भागवती कथा हियर इज भागवत One who hears, yes, just seven a month later. One who hears even once, then their minds take shelter of the Supreme Lord. So, for new people, how many are there? Two, Patrick, also three. So we're finishing seven days of discussion of the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There he is on the wall, you see, golden form of Krishna. He appeared 527 years ago. Even though he is Christian, he came in the mood of teaching about devotion to Krishna. So this morning we heard Rupa Shiksha, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings to Rupa Goswami. Also this morning we heard of Sanatana Goswami, how he escaped from prison, how he came and met the Lord, and now beginning Chaitanya Shiksha, Mahaprabhu's. teaching to sanat and goswami so this is very very deep very wonderful instructions if you hear this nicely everything you can understand who is the supreme lord who is the individual soul what is their relationship what is activities in their relationship and what is prayojan tap for the ultimate goal of life so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Sanatana Goswami asked, Kiya me kiya ma keno tapatrai iya na jene kema na hita hai. Sanatana Goswami, he is an eternally perfected soul. We should not think, there are two types of souls, those who eternally forget Krishna, like ourselves, bewildered by forgetfulness of Krishna, they come to this material world to fulfill their desires to be separate from Him. 
But there is another type of soul that is called Nityasi, eternally perfected souls. They're so much absorbed in the service of the Supreme Lord in the spiritual world, they don't even know the material world exists. So Nathan Goswami belongs to that second group of devotees. Therefore, when Krishna comes to this world, Sanatana Goswami always comes with him. It could be the Lord himself has put Sanatana Goswami into confusion so as to speak this Chaitanya Shiksha. Just like Arjun, he is also the eternal friend of Krishna, but Krishna put him into bewilderment so Bhagavad Gita could be spoken. So one of the main qualities of a devotee is humility. Guruji would say just like Love of Krishna and humility are like parallel tracks on a railway. That much no one has devotion, that much will be humble. Therefore the beginning devotee, the neophyte, he is the least humble. He thinks he is the greatest. The middle class devotee, the Madhya Madhika, he feels humility. But the topmost humility is expressed in the topmost devotees. Mahaprabhu said, Tranada Pisa Nichena Torori Vasuhishna Amada Namada Nakita Nesadahari. One who never demands respect for himself, who gives all respects to others, who is tolerant than a tree, more tolerant than a tree, more humble than a blade of grass, Kita Nesadahari. That person can always chant the name of Hari, always chant the name of Krishna. So that devotee will make a list of all the living entities in the universe and he will feel, I am last. <laughs> There's one anyway. So. so now because Swami approached Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with a straw in his teeth and said, Nicha Jati, Nicha Shangi, Potita Adam, Kuvishaya Kupori Gonainu Janam, Apana Hit Ahit Kichu Nahijani, Gramya Vyabahar Pandit Tai Satyamani. Kripa kori yadima kori ech buddha apana kripte kahe kartavya amar kiyami kiyama kenata patraya iha nahi jane kema nahi tahaya sadya sadan tattva puchit na jane kripa kori sadha tattva kohi tu apani beautiful how to approach a personality in a superior position this is taught by Mahaprabhu, you know, Sanatana Goswami. If you come to Guru thinking him and me are bodies, friendship is there, but one must also think, I am servant, I know nothing. Sanatana Goswami, I am born in a low family. All my associates are low class. I myself have completely fallen in the well of material sense enjoyment. I am the lowest of man. I have passed my whole life in a deep, dark hole of materialism. Hmm, are we feeling like that about ourselves? We're thinking, well, I'm pretty okay. Because we're not feeling that humility, then we're not achieving so much. I don't know what is good for me or what is bad for me. So what Shri used to say. In this world, what we think is very good is actually very bad for us. And in this world, what we, is very good for us, we think is very bad. Sense enjoyment we think is very bad. It's very good, but sense enjoyment is the cause of all suffering. So what is pleasing to us is actually the cause of our suffering. And what seems very foreign to us, devotion is actually the cause of all good fortune. I don't know what is good for me or what is bad. Nonetheless, in ordinary dealings, people consider me to be learned a person. You have taken me out of materialism, you are very merciful. Therefore, please tell me what is my duty. Who am I? Why am I always suffering in this world? If I don't know it, the answer to this, then how I can be benefited? No, therefore, this is the beginning of inquiry. Who am I? Why am I suffering? We do not want to suffer. In this world, especially California, people think I'm very independent. No one can tell me what to do. I'm free to do as I like, but it's not a fact. Anybody chooses, chooses disease. Anyone chooses old age. Mm-hmm. If we cannot stop our hair growing, we cannot stop our taking breaths. These are all forced upon us, but we never think these things. The way of the question of independence. 
Therefore, why am I suffering? I do not wish to suffer. I am forced to suffer. For what reason am I suffering against my will? That is tapatra, three false miseries. What is that? Adiatmic, adidevic, adibotic. Adiatmic means suffering inf- inflicted upon oneself. Right? So many people commit suicide, no one is killing them, own cells are killing themselves. Adiatmic. Suffering due to one's own body and mind. Adidevic, suffering inflicted by the devas in the form of too, it's too hot, it's too cold, hunger and thirst, famine, poverty, disease, tsunami waves. And then Adi, Baltic, those suffering inflicted by others. We all know what that means. No need for an explanation. Therefore, these threefold sufferings are always afflicting me. Why? Who am I? What is my duty? If I don't know why I'm suffering, how I can get any benefit of life? Sadhya Sadhana Tattva Puchita Najani. Actually, I do not even know how to inquire as to the goal of life. What is the goal? What is the process? Therefore, Tasman Guru Prapati. Therefore, you need Guru. What should you ask Guru? What's the best thing for me? Tasman Guru Prapati. Thank you. Therefore, you should go to Guru and ask, what is the best thing for me? What is the topmost achievement? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, you also not that you know all these things, but you are very inquisitive, and this is the nature of a devotee, a sadhu. Yoga Patra Hau Tumi Bhakti Parivatate. You are qualified to preach devotional service throughout the three worlds. But still, since you are inquiring, I will tell you. So, okay, hear very carefully. It's one half an hour. This is everything about how the jiva, came, how the soul came to this world. Jivera surupa hoye krishna nitya das tatastha sakti a bere bere kash surangsi kiran yeche agni dwala chai swabhavik krishna tin prakara shakti hoye. Many people say we came from the spiritual world. But in the first verse of Chenna Nasiksha, Mahaprabhu says now, Jivera Surupahoy, Krishna Nishidas, Tatasta Shakti. What is the eternal nature of a jiva, of the soul, that is called Swaru? Swaru means intrinsic form. What is the soul's nature? What is its eternal duty? What is its constitutional position? Krishna Nitya Das, eternal servant of Krishna. Krishna Tatasta Shakti Beda Bed Prakash. The living entities are not a man- they are manifested by Krishna's potency called the Tatasta Shakti. Okay, new people don't worry. Hang in there. Hearing again and again then we understand. Tatasta Shakti. What is the nature of the soul? The nature of the soul is also Tatasta. Tatasta. Tata means bank. Radha Kunda Tata Kunja Kuti. Tata. Tata the bank. Tata that which is situated on the bank. That is the nature of the soul, and the soul comes from that potency. Means, the bank of a river, the bank of the ocean, it's not land, it's not water. In the same way, the soul, he has a tendency, the soul can go towards spirit, or the soul can go towards matter. That is the nature of the soul. Therefore, how the souls came to this material world, why the souls are not in the spiritual world, because soul has a choice. The soul must go here or must go there, that's his nature. Guru Dev will give the explanation, just like you sprinkle mustard seeds on a knife blade. The mustard seed cannot balance on the edge of the blade. He will have to go here, he will have to go there. Therefore, the, the souls are spiritual, and if they choose, they can go directly to Krishna, Krishna's service. And if they choose, they can come to this material world to enjoy so-called material happiness. Therefore, because the soul is spiritual, it comes from Krishna, therefore it's non-different from him. But it is not completely non-different in every respect. There is some difference between the individual soul and the supreme soul. Therefore, to explain that, Suryansi Kiranyachi Ajna Dwalachaya. 
to give some of, to give us some idea of how this is possible, a material example is given. You understand? Therefore, these material examples are not completely perfect, but to give us some conception of what is inconceivable. Just like when we point, where's the moon? Oh, the moon's there between the branches of the tree. Actually, the moon is like 50 quadrillion miles away from the tree. But to give you some digdash and some indication and understanding, oh, it's there between the branches of the tree. So in Jayavadama Bhaktino Thakwa says, to give us some conception of what is inconceivable, these material examples are used. How? Like a spark. Yogi to your legs. Like a spark from a fire. Like a spark from a fire. Spark which comes from a fire has the same nature as a fire. Because we come from the Supreme Lord, we have the same nature as the Supreme Lord. But the spark and the fire are not completely the same in every regard. There's a difference, a qualitative difference. It means there's a difference in quantity. We are spiritual, there are similarities. We are spiritual, God is spiritual, Krishna. We are persons, we are personalities, Krishna is a person. We are seeking happiness, Krishna is also desirous of happiness. What are some others? We have thinking, feeling, willing, Krishna has thinking, feeling, willing. Sorry? Krishna is independent, we also have independence. We also desire love, Krishna desires love. There's some similarities. But there's difference also. Like spark and fire, there's the similarities, but the spark and the fire are not completely the same in every regard. The spark, the fire is unlimited and the spark is very small. So in the same way, there is difference between us and the Supreme Lord also. What is the difference? He is unlimited and all pervading, and Tamadol Maharaj is not. I am only in one body, and Krishna is in all bodies. He is situated in everyone's heart, but I am only situated in my heart. Difference is there. Krishna is all-knowing. I am definitely not all-knowing. He is omniscient, omnipotent. He has unlimited potencies. We do not have unlimited potencies. The main difference is he is all-knowing, we are not all-knowing. And he is always beyond illusion, and we are captured by illusion. Therefore, Shuryansi Kiran Yaichi Agnidwalachai. Like a molecular particle of fire, Krishna, the soul, and the super soul have that relationship. Krishna has three main energies. What is that? Vishnu Shakti Pada Prata Chetra Gyan Tata Pada Avidhi Karma Sajat Chitesh Shakti Yusitya God is not an energy. What is Yogita? Remember? God is not an energy. Because He is the source of all energies. All energy comes from a source. Electricity comes from powerhouse. Heat and light come from fire. Sound come from a person. So all sounds, all energies have a source. Therefore God is not an energy because God is the source of all energies. Therefore Krishna has his eternal form and he has unlimited energies. Of which those unlimited energies, three main energies are there, the spiritual potency, the individual souls and this material world, the material energy. In Sanskrit we say Chit Shakti, Jiv Shakti and Maya Shakti. So Krishna never transforms to become this world. People say everything's God. Really? Is that God? No. That's the creation of God. So, Krishna's energies transform. But Krishna himself never changes, he never transforms. Okay? So Krishna's spiritual potency transforms, that makes the spiritual world and everything that's happening there. Krishna's Jiva Shakti manifests us, the individual souls, and Krishna's Maya Shakti manifests this inert material creation. Just like a woman cannot produce a child with the help of a husband, ideally, in the same way, this Maya has no, this material inert matter has no power to do anything without the potency of the Supreme Lord in the form of the individual souls. So this is very technical, Sanatana Shiksha. 
This morning we just heard about the nectar of Krishna still. But Sanatana Shikshu is here to establish what is Krishna. Otherwise you'll think Krishna consciousness is some sentimental fantasy. So, Krishna is a Tin Shakti Parinati Chik Shakti Jeev Shakti Aramaya Shakti. Therefore Krishna has three potencies, unlimited potencies, but three are main, the spiritual potency, the individual souls and the material potency. No? So, Vishnu Purana says, Yaya Chakra Gya Shakti Sarva Sitarana Pisarvaga Samsara Tapan Akhilana Abnopti Atta Sanatana O King, the individual soul who gives life to all bodies is the living entity. Although the individual soul has the facility to live in either the material or the spiritual world, when he is influenced by ignorance, he suffers the threefold miseries of material existence and ignorance covers his eternal spiritual nature. Just like, if I'm facing the sun, there is no darkness. But as soon as I turn away from the sun, what's the first thing you see? Your shadow. So Krishna Surja Sama Haya Maya An... Krishna Surja Sama Haya Maya Andaka Jaha Krishna Tahi Maya Nahi Adhika Kundalada's Bengali so puts too much pressure. So, one time Gurudev asked me, you, you speak one verse, and very quickly I spoke. And Gurudev said, wait, wait, you speak slowly. And I said, if I'll speak slowly, you'll find out all the mistakes in my pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> so when someone who doesn't know Sanskrit and Bengali, then you're like a king. No? But when someone who knows Sanskrit and Bengali, <laughs> I want you to have to be careful. So, that's a good thing about speaking to those who are always going to have more knowledge than you. You have to be very careful. So, as soon as we face Krishna, Hare Krishna Ramananda, as soon as we face Krishna, there is no ignorance. As soon as we forget Krishna, we are captured by ignorance. Therefore, the living entity has a position to reside in both states, in ignorance, or in the liberated state, the service of the Supreme Lord. Krishna discusses in Gita, O Arjuna, the individual souls are spiritual, they are superior to this inert material world, but because of misuse of independence, they are captured by my illusory energy and they suffer. Krishna Bodhi, Sejiva, Anadi Bhairamukha, in this one, Ataiva Tari, Bayadara, Samsara, Ridukha, Kabi Swarga Uttai, Kabi Naraka Dubai, Dandajani Raja Yeha, Nadita Chubai. As soon as the living entity, the soul, forgets Krishna, He's captured by illusion. When did we fall into illusion? We cannot say he fell 10 years ago, 50 years ago. He fell since time without beginning. Because the fall down of the jiva to this material world is a spiritual occurrence, it occurred beyond the time. Put that in the inconceivable box. How long have we been here? Since time without beginning. Because you cannot say when the jiva fell. Because the time of his fall down was beyond the calculation of material time. When the jiva falls down, then he's captured by time. So when when is the time of his fall? Beyond the time. Beyond that. Because creation and dissolution of the universe is coming and going. How many millions of times we've been in this creation? The creation is dissolved, again we come. Again we go. So when you cannot say when, it's inconceivable. So Brahma is, uh, is uh, created the universe and he's the first one to fall down and he came later. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> exactly Not the first one to fall down. Each time the universe is dissolved and Brahma also is finished. Next creation, another person comes as the creator, Brahma. So how many times, what we have not been? If Guru Maharaj used to say, if someone criticizes us for something we haven't done, you shouldn't complain because you must have done it in some way. <laughs> And for Krishna Bhuli, say Jiva, Anadi Bhuli. If you new people, you really just a little bit understand this, have no more suffering in life. As soon as we forget Krishna, we're captured by illusion. What's the cause of all suffering? Forgetting our eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord. Therefore, Kabu Swargu Thai, Kabu Narak Dubai. It's not here. 
Sometimes he performs good activities as a human being. Feeding the poor, etc. What happens? He goes to celestial planets and enjoys there. But when his bank account of pious activities is exhausted, again he falls. Sometimes he performs bad activities. What happens? He is pushed down to the lower species, the lower planetary systems. Therefore, sometimes he goes up, sometimes he's down. It's not here, but Jagannatha Pandit in Prembhivata beautifully describes all these things. Huh? Kabu Deva, Kabu Daite, Kabu Dasa Prabhu. Sometimes we take birth as demigods, very happy. Sometimes we take birth as demons. Sometimes we take birth as Indra, the king of heaven. Sometimes we take birth as a worm and stool. Kabu Doki, Kabu Suki, sometimes very happy situation. Sometimes very miserable situation. Kobi Dasa Prabhu, sometimes servant, sometimes master. This constant cycle moving through the 8,400,000 species. Just on this planet. What to speak of the species and the unlimited planets in this universe. What to speak of the unlimited universe. Therefore this cycle is called samsara. Material existence. What's the cause of it? Patrick, for 10 bonus points. Forgetting Krishna. That's the only reason. So, he stated exactly like a criminal. You know, in the Middle Ages, what did they do? And in Abu Dhabi, and what's it called? Iraq, waterboarding? Waterboarding, donkey. <clears throat> the, the king ties you to a chair, he pushes you under the water. And when you're just about to give up your life, <clears throat> the state of the soul in this world is just like that. Sometimes he suffers when he's under the water, when the king raises him above the water and he's not suffering anymore, he thinks this is happiness. So what does material happiness? It's simply an absence of suffering. But material happiness is not bliss. You know? The soul is spiritual in nature, he desires ecstasy, not just material happiness. Therefore, Srila Bhama Maharaj used to say, all the endeavors of everyone in this world is just to remove unhappiness. And when we remove unhappiness, we think we're happy. All our endeavors, 24 hours a day, what are they? I'm hungry. Let's remove the unhappiness of hunger by eating. I'm thirsty. Let's remove the suffering of thirst by drinking. I feel sex desire. Let's remove the happiness of unhappiness. They remove the suffering of sex desire by engaging in sexual activity. You must understand? All our efforts are, I feel cold, therefore I need a house. All our endeavors are just to remove misery. And if there's no misery, we're so foolish, we think, I'm happy. So in that way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave that example for this reason. How to escape this cycle of birth and death? Oyam dutiya bhavanesa sad sadi sadipata sivapariyo sati Tadmayatayo Buddha Bajetam Bhaktiake Sham Guru Devat Manaha. On this verse, Guru Dev wrote a whole book. What's it called? Guru Devat Manaha. Very deep thing. Boyam Dvitiya Avanesha Tasya. As soon as the soul becomes absorbed in forgetfulness of Krishna, he becomes absorbed in fear. Why? Because he sees everything in terms of duality. Actually, everything belongs to Krishna. What have you created? Dilabhan, what have you created? Trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Put that in a plaque and hang it on your wall. What we have created, nothing, but still we think this is mine. That's the only thing you create is stool in the morning. We have not created anything. So that you look at Marge used to say, husband and wife would come before Marge. Then you would say, Who is she? Oh Marge, that's my wife. Your wife? Did you create her? <laughs> no, I did not create her. Then how you can, she can be your wife? <laughs> so that was always Maharaj's introduction whenever he meets anyone. <laughs> Maharaj always made it very clear on what, we got, on what basis we're going to have a relationship from beginning on. Therefore people were always terrified of him. He used to say people don't like him. They don't like to come. He see, room, his door was always open. No one would ever go in. <laughs> he used to say, my room is always open. No one comes. Why? All are afraid of me. Then he laughed. You know why? Because I always speak the truth. People do not like to hear the truth. 
Therefore, as soon as we forget Krishna, we become absorbed in duality. What is duality? Oh, this is mine. And that is someone else's. So actually, everything belongs to Krishna. But by ignorance, we think this is mine. I will enjoy it. That is called duality. And the living entity, in ignorance, becomes absorbed in that duality. Instead of thinking, I am Krishna, everything belongs to Krishna. He thinks, I am this body, and what belongs to this body is mine. So, duality. That duality causes fear. Mm-hmm. Ever walk to the bank with a lot of money in your bag? Ever happen, Yogita? Sometimes. Has it ever noticed you're carrying a lot of money to the bank? What are you thinking? You're like, <laughs> 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 Become full of fear. If you have nothing, you can go to the worst neighborhood. You don't care. <laughs> Someone pulls out a gun and says, what do you want? Take my bed sheet. <laughs> but if you don't own anything, there's no fear at all. But as soon as you think something is mine, then comes fear. I remember one time in Mexico, I had like a thousand US dollars, nowhere to keep, and I was staying in a dodgy place, put it under my pillow. At night time I could not sleep. <laughs> oh, who will come and steal? Then as soon as we think something is mine, then comes fear. One time Maharaj came, one new, newly married husband and wife came. And Maharaj is no more. Oh. Before you met your wife, you were very happy. Why? You had no anxiety. But as soon as you think she is my wife, then you became full of anxiety. I have to maintain her. I have to look after her. Someone may come and steal her. If she becomes sick, I will have to maintain her. Then comes the child. You will become full of fear. So as soon as you think this is mine, immediately the elder brother of possessiveness is fear. Therefore, boyam dwiti abhavanesa tatsya. The living entity out of ignorance becomes absorbed in duality, and with that duality comes fear. Why we fear the time of death? Oh, oh, my body. No, that is fear. Isad epatasya vipari osmati. What is the cause of this? The f- cause of this is vipari osmati, absorbed in a, how do you say, perverted understanding of life. Vipari means reflected. Like you look in the mirror, everything is the same, only it's opposite. When you scratch your left ear, in the reflection it appears as if you're scratching your right ear. That is called vipari. Prabhupada used to say, perverted reflection. So, what is the cause of this? Vipari of smriti, perversion, perverted vision. Why? B- because the soul is not the enjoyer, the soul is to be enjoyed. But in this world, because of Vipari of smriti, the soul comes to this world, forgets his nature as a servant, and the soul thinks, I am the enjoyer. I am Krishna, I am God. Whatever in this world I made, whatever this world is for my enjoyment. I will exploit it, I will be happy. Understand? All souls in this world have come to this world to become the enjoyer. The soul is not the enjoyer. The soul is the enjoyer. Isad apitasya vipari osmati. Isad Isad apitasya. Isha means God. Apitasya means that who who has withdrawn from God. Who is that? The individual souls. And because of withdrawing from Krishna, their smriti, their remembrance is completely opposite to their real nature. That's why in this world no one's happy, because everyone's acting against the real nature of the soul, which is to be a servant. And all souls are acting as exploiters, as enjoyers. So, tad maya tayo buddha abhijayat What is the cause of all this? That is called maya. Illusion. And what is the well, Only one means to become free from it. Bhakti eki sham guru devatmana. This exclusive devotion to the spiritual master. Guru Dev Gurudev would say. Gurudev is not, I read a beautiful thing. Someone said, Gurudev, how, when I'm not with you, I feel separate. And Guru Mahal said, I am closer to you than the air you breathe. Very beautiful thing. Because who is breathing air, only the body is breathing air. It has nothing to do with the soul. So, Bhakti Sam Guru Dev Now we belong to ourselves. Because we think we are independent, we are full of suffering. Therefore, the way to become free from that suffering is to give up your independence. How? 
Ultimately, that independence should be given back to Krishna. Oh, and I will serve you. But now we cannot see Krishna, we cannot follow Krishna, we cannot hear his instructions. Therefore, Krishna comes in the form of Guru. Not that the spiritual master is walking around with a flute and a peacock feather in his head. Krishna had come in the form of the spiritual master to give the souls the chance to surrender to him in that form. Saraswati Thakur said, Krishna appeared in the form of his own perfect devotee, that is Guru. He said, it's like you scratching your Krishna appearing and scra- massaging his own leg with his hand. Krishna appears in the form of a perfect servant to deliver the souls from this world. So by surrendering to Guru Dev, the soul is actually surrendering directly to Krishna himself. Bhaktiya Kisham Guru Devatmana. And then one should consider the Guru to be their own soul. Very deep thing. Guru should become more dear to one than oneself. No? Therefore one should completely surrender oneself to Guru and Guru becomes one's soul. No? At that time you do not belong to yourself. Who do you belong to? Guru Dev. No? So how you can explain? There's no words to explain. Only that person who is surrendered, that person can understand. So, normally the super soul is in the form of Paramatma. I read a nice thing. One lady was asking, Krishna Bhagavad I remember when she first came to Gurudev. She said, what happens when I get initiated? Then Gurudev said, the first thing I do is move, expand myself from the disciple's heart and kick out the Paramatma. <laughs> <laughs> Gurudev said, I go to Forum Vishnu, please, Jalab. <laughs> so Gurudev becomes a super soul. Understand? Therefore, no difference between the super soul and the bona fide spiritual master. No? We cannot hear the voice of the super soul. That means God is situated in the heart. Therefore, the super soul takes an external form in the form of the spiritual master. No? So, everything all depends on the faith of the disciple. No? So, that who does, they can understand. Who is not surrendered cannot realize anything what I'm talking about. Therefore, there's one story, Arjuna. There was one demon called Ekalabya. Actually, there's one guru in Iskon, he called his disciple Ekalabya. And Srila Gogamaj would laugh, Ekalabya, the demon, who would call their disciple that? <laughs> so he wanted to learn archery from Dronacharya. So Dronacharya knew the only reason he wants to learn weaponry is from me, is to kill me and kill Krishna. Some people want that. Kill Guru, now I am next Guru. That very bad thing. So Dronachai knew he is full of that desire. So Dronachai makes an excuse. You are from a low family, I cannot teach you. That is just an excuse to get rid of him. So Ekalavya went and made a murti, a picture. You can think of a photograph. A murti of Dronachai began worshipping. By worshipping Guru, he became the most, he became very powerful. He became so powerful one time the Pandavas were hunting. Arjuna, no, Yudhisthir, Bhimshan, Nakul, Sahadev. So they had one dog, no, hunting means dog. So dog smelled Ekalavya and he, oh, oh, oh. he chased Ekalavya and when the dog was barking, oh, oh, how long did it take it for a dog to bark? Oh, oh, oh. And that second the dog opened his mouth, Ekalavya filled his mouth with arrows. But no blood came, imagine, that type of, he was so much expert in archery. So the dog came back. <laughs> then Arjuna became shocked. I cannot do that. I don't have that power. And Arjuna was sad because Guru, he, Guru had promised Arjuna no one will surpass you in weapon. So Arjuna was not sad for himself. Oh, now my Guru Dev's words will be false. He was superior to me. So John Acharya went to Kalabya, saw his Guru and he fell at his feet. Then John Acharya asked, Oh, who has taught you weaponry? O oh, Gurudev, by your grace I have become so proficient. You have not given any donation. No. After you take instruction, after you take initiation, some gift should be given, given to the Guru. This is the rule. That is called, what's it called? Pranam. You have not given any Guru Dakshin, you have not given any gift. O oh, Gurudev, what do you want? Give me your thumb. So Ekalabha took out his sword. 
cut off his thumb and gave it to Guru. So everyone thinks what a great disciple. He gave his own thumb. Actually, he's a fool. <laughs> because without a thumb you cannot fight, therefore he was one of the first ones killed in the Mahabharata War. <laughs> Why he's a fool? If drunk, because he was thinking, this is my thumb, I am giving my thumb to a separate person called Guru Dev. Like a transaction. I've done my duty, Whew, now I can do whatever I want. If Dronacharya had said the same thing to Arjuna, give me your thumb, what would Arjuna have said? Guru Dev, this thumb is already yours. This hand is yours. This body is yours. I am completely yours. <laughs> Arjuna is not thinking I am giving something separate to Guru Dev. Therefore, Guru Dev used to say, you cannot say I am giving a donation to Guru. Because the disciples should think everything I have is already Guru Dev's. The high class will think this body is Guru Dev's. Understand? So much they become close and intimate. They never think Guru Dev is a separate outside person. By surrendering to Guru, one becomes just like Guru Dev. Everything they have is for him. So such a disciple will never fall down. Such a disciple will never experience any difficulty in spiritual life whatsoever. Because they are completely surrendered, completely protected. So, that means Guru Dev Atmana. And actually this is the first step in bhajan. Guru Padas, right? Taking complete shelter of the feet of Guru Dev. Hmm? Just put up your hands, how many of us have done that? Because we have not completely surrendered to Guru Dev, therefore we are experiencing so many difficulties in our life. All difficulties are extinguished by worshipping Guru Dev like your own, as if he is your own soul, not some separate outside person. So the Guru Dev said, You think I am far from you? I am close to you than the air you breathe. And when I read that, I became stunned. So, easy, right? That's how you cross material existence. Let's go to another chapter. <laughs> so, Therefore, all these songs we're singing, Oh Guru Dev, Koro Moyat Masat, Guru Dev, make me yours. Make me the same as you. Make me your property. So by one who surrenders like that to Guru, then that person crosses the ocean of birth and death. If a Guru Dev would always say, what is the backbone of devotion? It's not how many slokas you know, how nicely you can speak. This is not how good you can cook or play the Madanga. This is not devotion. Devotion means one thing. Surrender to Guru Dev. And that same feeling we should also have for Shiksha Guru. Two types of Guru is there. One who gives initiation, who gives mantra. But if one is very fortunate, one can find Shiksha Guru. Shiksha Guru and Diksha Guru are not separate persons. They're not separate things. So in the same way one surrenders to Diksha Guru, one can also have the same feelings towards Shiksha Guru. Guru Mahesh if you see them different, you cannot make any advancement in spiritual life. The Guru Dev would say, even in dreams, never consider them separate or different. One time <coughs> I asked Guru Dev, what's the first thing you said when you met your Guru? No, we always remember the first time we met our spiritual master. And Guru Dev said, the first thing I went, said, I remember I came from my home, Guru Dev had left everything and come to his Guru Dev in Navadri. Then Guru Dev, when he bowed to his Guru Dev, when he saw him, they had exchanged letters but not met. So Guru Dev said, I bowed. You know, offered my respect. Then his Guru Dev said, because Guru Dev was married with two children, police officer. Like his Guru Dev said, I want to give you sannyas. That means I want you to leave everything, your wife, your children, your parents, all your property, just dedicate fully to me and to devotion. I want to give you sannyas. And Guru Dev said, Guru Dev, if you want me to be sannyasi, I'll be sannyasi. If you want me to be king, I'll be a king. If you want me to take off all my clothes and dance naked in the street, I will do that also. Today, whatever affection I have for my wife, my children, or my parents, today, I'm giving all that at your lotus feet. Whatever you want me to do, I will do that too. So when he was so sincere, Param Guru Dev began weeping. And Guru Dev also cried. That was their first exchange. No? And what was our first exchange? Is he really bona fide? <laughs> <laughs> the time comes for giving donation, we're like, oh, okay, I just hide my hand so he doesn't see how much I've got in my wallet. <laughs> Where is our surrender? 
One time someone gave a hundred rupees to Sri Chirikrama. Oh, thank you, you are giving me that which you don't need. So Guru doesn't want these things. The first, the real gift to the Guru is complete surrender. It means I am giving myself to you. That is the real donation, that is the real pranam. Okay, so one who becomes like that, is they, they cross the influence of Ma, there is no other way. Because by turning away from Krishna, we become absorbed in material life. So what's the remedy, Sita? Again, surrender to Krishna in the form of Guru. And therefore, we should even in dream never think Guru and Krishna is separate thing. Shakshad Haritvana Samastha Sastra Uktat Satab Abhyateva Sadhvi Kintu Prabhoya Priyava Tasya Bande Guru Sri Chananaraganda All the scriptures say the spiritual master is none different than the Supreme Lord. Kintu. But he is not God. He is none different than God because of his surrender. No? There's many ways you can the Guru Tattva is not any small Tattva. Just like you put iron into fire. If you touch that iron, what will happen? Because he's come to the fire, the iron is completely offered itself to the fire. All the qualities of the fire have come in the iron. If you touch it, you'll get burned. Is the iron fire? No. Is the iron different from fire? Touch it and find out. By his surrender to the Supreme Lord, by surrender to his Guru Dev, Guru becomes non-different from them. But Guru is still not Krishna. He is separate personality. He is also a servant of Krishna. Understand your Gita? Wow, if you understand that, you're very lucky. That means you have a chance of escaping from material existence. Right? So, main thing is Kintu Prabhu. The Guru is not God. He is not Krishna, but he is not different than Krishna. An example, do you know what a Rasgulu is, Yogita? No. How do you explain to an American what a Rasgulu is? It's like a stopping white donut. It's like it's candy. It's like a stopping okay. white donut. Thanks, Dino. A donut. <laughs> Sorry? Oh. Anyway, I'll just a rasgul. A rasgul is a it's a block of it's a piece of cheese boiled in sugar water. Every part of the, that sweet you touch is made of sugar. Every part you take is sweet, but still that sweet is not made of sugar. It's made of cheese, honey. In the same way, guru, every part of him is offered to Krishna, surrendered to Krishna. Every part of him is Krishna. Krishna's service is there. Krishna's, understand, qualities are there. But still the Guru is not Krishna. He is Kintu Prabhu. He is also a servant of Krishna. Therefore, both things will have to see in Guru. You will have to see the function of Krishna. That thing you will have to see. But also he has his own aspect as a Vaishnava. Understand, both things are there. You cannot just take half. Both things you'll have to accept. So, I'll read the full translation. When the living entity is attracted by the material energy which is separate from Krishna, he is overpowered by fear because he is separate from the Supreme Lord. Because he is separated from the Supreme Lord by the material energy, his conception of life is reversed. In other words, instead of being the eternal servant of Krishna, he becomes Krishna's competitor. Wow. This is called Vipari or Smriti. To nullify this mistake, one who is actually learned and advanced worships the Supreme Personality of Godhead as his spiritual master, worshipful deity and source of life. Thus, he worships the Lord by the process of unalloyed devotion. Everyone clear? You can imagine what teachings in the Sanatana Shikshu. Thus, Sadhu Shastra Kripa Jari Krishna Mukohoi Sejiva Nistar Maya Tara Chara. Thus, the forgetful living soul again becomes remem- attains remembrance of Krishna by the mercy of the devotees, by the mercy of the scripture. Krishna says, Arjuna, this divine energy of mind, the illusory energy, consisting of the three modes of nature, goodness, passion and ignorance, is very difficult to overcome. But those who surrender to me can easily cross beyond it. And how do we surrender to Krishna? Surrender to Krishna by following the instructions of the spiritual master. You know? Therefore, Maya Mukta Jeev Nahi Swata Krishna Gyan Jeevere Kripa Kwere Krishna Ved Puran The conditioned soul cannot revive his consciousness by his own efforts. Okay, Yogita? 
Because illusion is so powerful, how can you overcome it by your own effort? It's impossible. Therefore, by one's own effort, one cannot have Let's turn them all on. Thank you. By one's own efforts, one cannot achieve remembrance of Krishna. Rather, by the mercy of Krishna, one can remember Krishna again. And how does Krishna give us mercy? Through the scriptures and through the form of the sadhus, the devotees. Sastra Guru Atma Rup Apana Janan Krishna Mor Prabhu Trat Jeevan Hoya Gyan. There were the three ways that we again remember our relationship with Krishna. Shastra, Guru, Atma. The bona fide Vedic scriptures, Guru and Krishna himself in everyone's heart. These three forms Krishna gives us remembrance. Veda Shastra Kore, Samman Abhide Pariyajan, Krishna Praptis Sambandha Bhakti Praptis Sadam. Sambandha Bhagavan Abhide Bhakti Hoi, Krishna Prem Pariyajan Veda Tri Tattva Kore. Therefore, all the Vedic scriptures are divided into three sections, three divisions of teachings. The first is called Sambandha, relationship. Okay, Jeremiah, still alive? The Vedas teach only three things. The first section of teaching is called Sambandha. What is relationship? Everything I'm seeing, where does it come from? It comes from Krishna only. Whatever we're seeing, whatever we're experiencing, whatever anyone else is experiencing, whether materially or spiritually, what's the cause, what's the source of everything? Larry for ten bucky points? Krishna. This is the first stage of knowledge called Sambandha Gyan. Where do I come from? Krishna. Where does his body come from? Krishna. Where does my wife come from? Krishna. Okay, it's Krishna. Don't touch it. <laughs> One has this knowledge then one becomes free from the enjoying propensity. It's not mine. It belongs to him. So Sambanda is the first stage. If everything belongs to Krishna, if I also belong to Krishna, what's my duty? I should serve him. Never one uses all of Krishna's stuff for Krishna's service. That is called the second stage. Bhakti. Abhidaya. And third, if I keep serving Krishna purely, what will I get? You'll get prema, pure love of Krishna. Very easy. How to take a mark? This very nice one. Isn't it? Patrick, what I was saying, you know, today Patrick is telling me he's reading the Rig Veda. Rig Veda is like how many verses? Like, I think it's like one and a half million verses. You want to read all that? And that's only one Veda. There's Rig Veda, Sama Veda, Arta Veda, Yaju Veda, four Vedas. Then there's a Upanishad, 108 main Upanishads. 18 Puranas. Who is going to read all that? And you're going to read and you're going to understand everything perfectly. So all that work, no need to go and do that headache yourself. Someone's already done it for you. That's called the Supreme Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his instructions to Sanatana Goswami. Isn't it? In just two or three verses, he's given the essence of all the Vedic scriptures. Therefore, in order to give us some understanding in an easy way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Sanatana Goswami one nice story. There was an orphan. He was not an orphan actually. His father was there, but he did not know who his father was. That he could not enjoy the wealth of the father. So he considered himself very poverty stricken. That poor boy went to an all knowing astrologer. <clears throat> the astrologer said, Your father has kept a great wealth for you in your own courtyard. But don't dig in the door. If you dig in the north, what happens? In the north is one snake. If you dig there, the snake will come out of his hole, bite you, and you'll give up your life. Do not dig in the western direction. Because in the western direction there's a snake, uh, a ghost. If you dig up in the western direction, the ghost will haunt you, you will lose your life. Do not dig in the south. If you dig in the, sna- in the south, there's a beehive, wasp's nest. They'll come out of the ground and bite you, give you unlimited suffering. But if you dig in the east a little bit, you'll achieve your father's wealth. What's the meaning? In the northern direction, there's a snake. What's the snake? 
No. Mysticism, mystic yoga process. Not like a snake bites, you become full of poison. In the same way those who follow the yoga process, they became possessed with the unlimited, they become possessed by desires to control everyone and everything. Therefore there are eight perfections offered by the yoga process. Anima, can you remember? Lagima. Anima means to become bigger than the bigger biggest, than the bigger. Than the smaller than the smallest. Smaller than the smallest. Prapti. Prapti. One can take things from a distance place just by meditation. I saw yogis in the South India. Actually, the ashram I used to live in, one day they were complaining. We have no money for the ashram, we have no money for the ashram. See, do you think money is a problem? <laughs> when died that, millions of rupees just appeared in his hand. And he, for real, I saw. And he just closed his hand. Money is no problem. This is what? Yogic perfection, Pratima. From a distant place you can bring things. Many things he used to do, I'll tell you. Thank God I forgot all that stuff. <clears throat> this is like poison of a snake. The yogis become so much absorbed in this thing they forget the goal of life. There's one story. One yogi came back to his village after 25 years in Himalaya. And he said, I know a great yogic power. I can walk on water. So the next day all the villagers came and the guy, they walked across the river. And all the villagers were cheering. That's my boy. One guy from our village can walk on water. Amazing, amazing. And then one old man said, Fool, your yogic perfection is not even worth one dollar. What? Because for one dollar I can sit in a boat and someone else will row me across the river. <laughs> Therefore, that is like snake poison. Snake bites you, you forget everything. So yoga is like that. You forget the goal of life, become absorbed in trying to manipulate the material energy. So don't go in the north. Don't go in the west. There's a ghost. What's the ghost? Kaivalya, mukti, liberation. Like a person becomes haunted by a ghost, they forget who they are and what they are. They become another person. They lose their identity. Same way those who try and merge with God lose their identity. So don't go towards the ghost. Don't dig in the south. The south is wasps. What is that? Karma, fruit of activity. Working very hard in this world by performing pious activities to enjoy in the next life. That is simply millions of wasps biting and giving you disturbance 24 hours a day and no benefit. If you dig a little bit in the east, then what's that? Devotion. Therefore the deities always face east. When you do your gaiji, which way you face? East. Why? East is Krishna's direction. When the sun comes up, what does it do? Dispel darkness. And the sun always arises in the east. Many reasons we do things. Of course, no. So, eastern direction, if you do a little bit of devotion and you dig, you find the treasure. So, who's the orphan? Who's the all knowing astrologer? What's the courtyard? What's the courtyard? Our own heart, our own soul. Isn't it? Our own wealth. The soul's own knowledge, eternal relationship, the soul's own constitutional position. Who's the orphan? Who forgot their father? Us. And who's the all-knowing astrologer who tells him where to dig? Guru Dev. Yeah. So, in a very simple, simple way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is describing the goal of life and everything to avoid, to achieve that. Therefore, Bhakti Mam Ekyagraha Sadhyatma Priyasatam Bhakti Punati Mam Nishta Swapakam Ati Sambhavat Na Sadhiti Mam Yoga Na Sankamadama Uvaras Na Udavas Na Swadhyas Tapastago Yatar Bhakti Mamojita Again and again Krishna is saying the same thing I am only achieved by Bhakti I am only achieved by Bhakti Being very dear to the devotees I am achieved only through unflinching faith and devotional service Bhakti Aham Ekaya Graya Ek means one Bhakti Aham Graya means to attain It's not rocket science Bhakti Aham Ekagraya I'm achieved only by Bhakti only by devotion Na Sadhiti Namam Yoga Na Sankhya Dhamu Devas Na Sadhyas Tapastyago Yatir Bhakti Mamojita O Udo I'm not controlled by philosophy Namam Yoga I'm not controlled by yoga Na Sankhyam I'm not controlled by those who spend their whole life trying to work out what's the difference between the soul and non-soul Na Dharma I am not controlled by religious piety 
na swadhyas are not achieved by meditation or study of the Vedas. Yata bhakti mamojita I am controlled only by bhakti. Atayiva bhakti krishna prapteru pai. Therefore bhakti is the only means by which I am achieved. Abhide bodhita sarva sastrakai. Therefore bhakti or devotion is a process. And what is the goal? So many verses Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was giving to evidence to establish this. And what is the goal? Like he says here, when one becomes rich, he enjoys all life. In the same way, when one, uh, one becomes happy, all miseries are absolved, so dissolved. In the same way, when one practices devotion, automatically pure love of God awakens within their heart. Therefore, Dayad Daridanas Babakshai Prem Falahoy, the goal of devotion is not to remove miseries or to remove poverty. The goal of devotion is only one thing. What is that? Prema Bhakti, pure love for Krishna. Sachinandan Gaudahari Ki So, if you want to read all Sanatana Shiksha, if I start describing all these things, then everyone will start crying and running away. All the Siddhanta, what, who is Krishna? What is his body made of? What are his expansions? What are his different expansions? Three expansions of Krishna. Swayam Rup, Tadigatma Rup and Avesh. I request people in their own leisure you may read those things. Otherwise, how do you know what are the incarnations of Krishna? What are the different, inc- what are the different types of incarnations? What are the expansions, direct and also indirect? Mahatma described all these. What are the different incarnations present in the spiritual sky? The 24 main ones. Then Mahatma describes the innumerable incarnations of the Supreme Person, the different ages of Krishna, hmm. his different potencies. Who is Balaram, Krishna's first expansion? The six types of incarnations. Can you remember them? Leela Avatar, Yuga Avatar, Guna Avatar, Purush Avatar, Manvantara Avatar, Shakti Besh Avatar. Six types of incarnation. Mahaprabhu describes them all. He describes the position of Lord Shiva. Maybe we should say a bit for Yogi to do this. Guna Avatar means Krishna himself never is involved in the creation of the universe. He's got better things to do. Who's the mayor of California? <laughs> Whatever. Who's the what's it called? <laughs> Governor of California? What's his name? Governor <laughs> no, What happened to Schwarzenegger? <laughs> no, I lost faith in America when I go to George Bush in twice. <laughs> So, is Schwarzenegger personally cleaning the toilets down at Venice Beach? No. He's got better things to do. In the same way, the Supreme Lord Krishna is not directly involved with creating, maintaining, or destroying the world. He's got better things to do. He's enjoying in Vrindavan. No? So, Krishna takes three forms to perform acts of creation maintaining and dissolving the material form. Those three forms are called Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. Shiva. Therefore Krishna can take those three forms but those three forms cannot take the form of Krishna. There's a difference. Understand your better? Krishna can take the form of Shiva but Shiva cannot take the form of Krishna. Just like if you put yogurt into milk, what happens to the milk? It becomes yogurt. Is yogurt the same as milk? Is it? You cannot say yogurt and milk are different. Milk can become yogurt, yogurt cannot become milk. Krishna, by adding... Okay, I don't want to explain all this, it's too complicated. <coughs> because Krishna has no transformation. Krishna can take a material form as Lord Shiva for the act of controlling the material world. But... Lord Shiva cannot reveal himself in the form of Krishna. Just like yog- milk can become yogurt, yogurt cannot become milk. 
So Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, these are called Gunavatars. They're in charge of the functions of the material creation. But Krishna, even though not different from them, he also has his own separate existence. Lord Mahaprabhu described the Purusha avatars. Krishna, you missed everything. Take that class and listen to it. I know, even I'm surprised, all these good things out came out. At all mercy of Guru Dev Mahaprabhu. There are different Purusha avatars. Krishna takes three expansions. The first expansion of Krishna in terms of material creation is called Mahavishnu. He's so big the universe is coming in and out of the pores of his body. And he doesn't realize it. Then he expands himself into each universe. That form is called Gabadakshai Vishnu. That Gabadakshai Vishnu expands again into the heart of every living entity. So Krishna is the Paramatma of the whole creation, the Paramatma of every universe, and the Paramatma of every soul. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu describes all these things. And he describes unlimited Siddhanta of Krishna. Then very wonderful thing. Sanatana Goswami is hearing about all the incarnations. Krishna Tattva. What is Vishnu Tattva? Then Sanatana Goswami says, please describe me which form the Lord takes in every age. You may know there are four ages. Tata Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dwapa Yuga and Kali Yuga. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Yada Yada Hidarma Shadwani Bharati Bharata Bhutanamadana Satapadama Sri Janiham Paratanaya Sadhanam Vishnu Vinasaya Duskatam Dharma Samstapada Midhuyanti Yuge Yuge. O Arjuna, I take a form in every age to protect the sadhus and to destroy the non devotees. To establish religion and check that when irreligion becomes very prominent, and religion declines, that's how I appear personally in every age. When God appears in every age, that is called Yuga Avatar. Sanatana Goswami asks, please tell me the symptoms of the Yuga Avatar. In which form the Supreme Lord will appear? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained each of the four Yuga Avatars. In Satya Yuga he appears in a white complexion, he wears tree bark, he wears an antelope skin, he carries a rod and water pot. He is Brahmachai, whitish complexion, Sukla Murti. Uh, no dog in the temple. Thank you. Just tie him up outside and come in. Huh? Yeah, if you choose the shoes, we're going to see you. Okay, just tie him up out there, no problem. So, the Lord appears in the whitish complexion in Sapta Yuga and teaches the process of meditation. He offered benedictions to Kardama Rishi. Who is that? What's his name? Kapiladev. Therefore, in the next age he appears in a reddish complexion and teaches the process of fire sacrifice. In Dwapa Yuga he appears in a blackish complexion. Who is that? Krishna. Then Sanatana Goswami is asking, then please tell me the incarnation of this Kali Yuga. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains. Pitavana Dari Tabi Koyale Paravatan. In the age of Kali, Lord Krishna assumes a golden complexion. He is accompanied by his eternal associates and his devotees. He introduces Harinam Sankatan, the chanting of the Mahamantra throughout the world. <laughs> by this process, the Supreme Lord in Kali Yuga delivers love of Krishna for the population in general. Dharma Prabhat Kori Brajanandan Prem Gai Nachilok Kori Sankirtan. Lord Krishna, in the age of Kali, personally introduces the process of the age, which is the congregational chanting of the name of Krishna. He will personally appear, chant and dance in ecstatic love, and thus flood the whole world with pure love of Krishna. Who's that? Krishna Vana Matrisa Krishna. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu quoted from the Bhagavad Purana in the age of Kali, those who are most intelligent will perform the congregational chanting of the names of Krishna and they will worship that incarnation who is golden in complexion who is also personally chanting the names of Krishna. Although his complexion is not blackish, he is Krishna himself, he is accompanied by his eternal associates, servants, weapons. 
What is the weapon of the Supreme Lord in Kali Yuga? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Therefore the Lord appears in all ages. The result you get in Satya Yuga by meditation, the result you get in Treta Yuga by performing expensive fire sacrifices, the result you get in Dwapa Yuga by directly worshipping the Lord, is achieved in the same age by chanting the Maha Mantra Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Kritya Dato Vishnu, Tretyam Yatatomake, Dwapyam Parachajayam, Kalotad Hare Kirtana. In the Golden Age, Satya Yuga, the process is meditation. In Treta Yuga, the process is fire sacrifice. In Dwapa Yuga, the process was direct service to the Lord. And Kali Yuga, the process is Kalautad Harikitana, chanting the name of Krishna. Therefore, whatever you could achieve in the other Yugas, the same result is achieved in this age simply by vibrating the name of Krishna. Okay. So, those who are advanced and highly qualified, they know the glories of this age of Kali. They've, even though this age is an ocean of faults, Kali dosa nidadajan estahi ekad mahadguna. We see in Kali Yuga, religion goes down by down, day by day. Look at America. Fifty years ago they had abortion. No. Hundred years ago, was it divorce? No. What do you think? America when it was founded on religious principles. Have a look at how for a walk on Venice Beach. Day by day, not just America, all countries. Day by day religion goes down, down, down. And your religion, sinful activity increases day by day. There were this age of like a hell. This Kali Yuga. Short lifespan. People have to work like donkeys just to fill the stomach. They have no knowledge of the goal of life. This Kali Yuga is like an ocean of faults. But still, intelligent persons pray to God, I want to take birth in this Kali Yuga. Why? Because one can achieve the perfection of life just by vibrating the name of Krishna. Therefore it says in the 12th canto of Bhagavad Puran, in, even the demigods in the, are praying to Lord Vishnu, please give me human form in this age of Kali Yuga. One achieves everything very easily. So, Mahabharata said, Thus I describe the different incarnations the Lord appears and what they teach. Sanatana Goswami is very intelligent. Therefore he said, I am, very in, I am less intelligent. He is being humble. I am lowly and poorly behaved. I still cannot understand who is the incarnation of Kali Yuga. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I don't, Who else is it? who has a golden complexion, who teaches the chanting of Hare Krishna throughout the world, who has absorbed in ecstasy of his own devotion, who is that? That is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is standing right in front of you, Sanatana. <laughs> Sanatana Goswami knows all this, but devotee is always very clever. They always know how to bind and control the Lord. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is never saying, I am that incarnation. He is describing everything about that incarnation. And who is that? Who is he describing? Himself. So Sanatana Goswami said, still you describe everything, I cannot understand who it is or what it is. Then Mahaprabhu said, there is one special quality. Avatar nahi koi ami avatar. Incarnation will never say, I am an incarnation. Vyasadev knows all this. Therefore, another thing. The Supreme Lord has no material body, yet He descends amongst the human beings in His original spiritual form. Thus you can understand the Supreme Lord by His, how do you say, Surup Lakshman and Tatsa Lakshman, His intrinsic qualities and His external characteristics. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is describing in the incarnation of Kali Yuga, He will be known as a hidden incarnation because He will not declare that He is the Supreme Lord. Therefore, Sanatana Goswami asking again and again. The color of the Supreme Lord in Kali Yuga, you have described to be golden complexion. His activities include the distribution of love of God and the chanting of the Maha Mantra. The incarnation of Krishna for this age is indicated by these symptoms. Please tell me exactly who it is. 
Then she said to Mahaprabhu, said, Sanatana, please give up your duplicitousness. <laughs> Don't try and trick me. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu changed the subject and went to Shakti rest on the planet. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu never swayed around saying, I am Krishna, I am Krishna. If anyone would say, you are Krishna, what would he do? Oh, Krishna, Krishna. Or the individual soul can never be Krishna. I am just a servant of Krishna. We heard yesterday when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to North, went to Bengal, millions of persons were following. And all were chanting the holy names. Then Mahaprabhu would not come out of his house. He was trying to hide. Then one devotee, I cannot remember who it was, one devotee went outside and he was doing that, like that, to the sun. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, what are you doing? I'm covering the sun, I'm covering the sun. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, that's foolishness. How you can cover the sun by your hand? Then the devotee said, in the same way, how you can hide that you are Krishna? Come outside. <laughs> <laughs> you think you can hide yourself just by staying inside the house? Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went outside, Hari Bol, and gave everyone a dash. Sachinandan go to Hari Ki. So devotee, very tricky. Guru Mahaj says, Krishna is very crooked. Everything about him is crooked. He stands, you never see Krishna standing straight. Krishna always bent. Guru Mahaj said, everything about him is crooked. His glance is crooked. His pose is crooked. His stick is crooked. His heart is crooked. His Yamuna is crooked. His devotees are more crooked. <laughs> so, Sanam Goswami catching the Lord by his questions. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu defeated, but he is not saying. But who is that incarnation? Who appears in Kali Yuga with a golden complexion, who spread love of Krishna everywhere? Who is it, Pran? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Therefore, those who are most lucky in this Kali Yuga, they recognize that incarnation of Krishna in this age, and they worship him by chanting the names of Radha Krishna. Sachinandam Gaura Hari Ki Good. So very quickly we crossed the ocean of philosophical understanding of Krishna. But only philosophical understanding will not catch us. Still we must study it. Guru Mahaj would always make sure all his disciples knew all these things. Hmm? They would not be lazy. What is it? Siddhanta Kuriya Janina Koriola. Yes. Siddhanta Bolya Chitina Koriolas. Yahoyte Krishna Mone Sudhaga Viswas. Don't be lazy to understand the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Isn't it? Even though it seems a bit dry, if you do this, then your mind will become very fixed on Krishna. Otherwise you may make a mistake of thinking Krishna consciousness is some sentimental. No, emotion, it's not. Knowledge without, faith without knowledge will not take you so far. Prabhupada used to always say, we want faith with knowledge. So, by worshipping Krishna properly with a proper understanding, Krishna's sweetness is revealed. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, after describing the philosophy of Krishna, then he began describing the sweetness of Krishna. And we can hear, no? Very sweet things. So, I'm going to be a little of a criminal. I'm going to jump to the end. <laughs> If you want, no, we'll stick with this. Because tomorrow morning, can anyone come tomorrow morning? Yes. So tomorrow morning, that... Okay, so... I think it's not out of place. Don't mind. Because also here, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu describes the sweetness of Krishna. You can do one kiss on for a second. End of Auntie Lila, I one very special section I want to finish with.
If someone, one Saki will say to Radhika, Oh Radhe, you control your senses. You be peaceful. Then Radharani will say, How I can control my senses? Why? Krishna's beauty is like an ocean. And the hearts of the gopis are like hills. Therefore Krishna's beauty completely covers and drowns the minds of the gopis. Krishna attracts the heart of the gopis by his five qualities. Those who took calm guide to they can hear this and very nice to them understand. Krishna's beauty, the sound of his words, the vibration of his fruit, his touch, his fragrance, and the taste of his lips are indescribably attractive. All these five qualities of Krishna are attracting my five senses. Therefore, my mind is like a rider, and my five senses are like the horses. Remember in the Middle Ages, they were tied, one guy, five horses, one, one rope around the neck, one rope on each of the limbs, and the horses would gallop, the man would be separated to five pieces. Radhani would say, I am like that. My mind is like the guy in the middle. And my five senses are like the horses. My eyes are attracted to the sweetness of Krishna's form. We would hear, the gopis would criticize Lord Brahma. Brahma is a fool, he does not know how to create. Because do we anki ki How can anyone drink Krishna's sweetness with only two eyes? Do we dibe ark lak koti? Next cycle of creation, some gopi should be put in charge. And if we, we would give everyone millions and millions of eyes, then everyone could really see the sweetness of Krishna. My eyes are attracted by the sweetness of his form. My fragrance is attracted by the sweetness, the smell of his, the fragrance of his body. The touch of Krishna cooler than millions and millions of sandalwood trees, millions and millions of moons. His lips, his lips, the nectar of his lips is sweeter than millions and millions of nectar drinks. You know? The sound of his voice is sweeter than millions of cuckoos. And his flute playing attracts the minds of all moving and non-moving entities. Therefore Radharani says, my mind, just like in material sense, if we see something, then the mind goes controlled by the sense of sight. Mind goes there to the touch sense. 
You know, like when you're crossing the road and you couldn't be bothered turning your head to see if there's a car? You just listen. That means your mind goes completely to the sense of hearing. Oh, no car, then you cross. So the mind goes to where the senses are. So Radharani says, what I can do? My mind cannot go five places at once. <laughs> mind is attracted by Krishna's form through the sight. To, to the taste of Krishna's lips, it goes to the sense of taste. To the sense of touch, my mind is going five places. My mind is willing, being pulled five places at one time. How I can maintain my life? How I can tolerate this? If some gopi may say, control your senses, Radharani, then you'll be peaceful. Then Radharani say, what can I do? I cannot become angry of my senses. Is it the fault of my senses? No, it's the fault of Krishna's beauty. <laughs> it's the fault of Krishna's form. It's the fault of the sweetness of his voice. It's the fault of the nectar of his lips. It's the fault of the coolness of his touch. These five pieces are by force dragging my senses. I want to drag my mind away and think of my husband and think of my material duties, but I cannot do it. Jephar Purnamasi said, How astonishing! The yogis are meditating and trying to put their minds on the toenails of Krishna. Like in the morning we wake up, we take our mala, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Where's our mind going? Price of gas, my God. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Oh God, did that God work? Today I swear I'm going to give him one. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. We are so unfortunate, no? We are sitting there trying to take our mind away from this world and put it on Krishna. What happened? Mind is going everywhere except them. But the high class devotee is like Radha and she says, I am trying to forget Krishna. Because the remembrance of him gives one suffering also. It means I cannot attain him. And how much pain. So remembrance of Krishna is like a knife, like a sword. When you remember him, it cuts. When you forget him, when you try to forget him and cannot, it also cuts. That is the inconceivable nature of Krishna prayer. His name gives such a sweetness, but at the same time, that name gives such a burden. I cannot achieve him, I cannot attain. So is it the name nectar, is it poison? Hard to understand. So rather than saying, it's not the fault of my senses, it's the fault of Krishna. <laughs> my senses are automatically attracted, and I cannot control them. Therefore, I, the remembrance of Krishna gives me so much disturbance. It means that is nectar. Radhani tries very hard to take her mind away from Krishna and put on her materialistic household chores. She cannot. This is astonishing. So, the consciousness of all the women in the world is like hills, but Krishna's beauty is like a flood. That flood takes away all the intelligence of everyone who sees it. The sweetness of Krishna's words plays complete havoc with the hearts of all women. How many women in L.A.? None. Not even one. All women in L.A. trying to be men, trying to enjoy. What does it mean when it talks about women? Those who have given up the enjoying spirit. Those who are servants of Krishna. So, the sweetness of Krishna is joking. His words have so many meanings. One quality of Krishna, he's an expert at joking. Special quality of dear elite Krishna. Expert, every word he says, some joke, some hidden meaning. The sweetness of his joking words play havoc with the hearts of all women. And the, the sound of his voice binds their ears to him forever. Thus there is a tug of war between the heart and the ear. And the, in the middle, the woman is giving up her life. Therefore, Krishna Anga Sushita, the touch of Krishna's hand is so cooling. It cannot be compared to tons of sandalwood pulp or millions of moons. It attracts the bodies of all ladies. Thus, the body of Krishna attracts the minds of women within the whole creation. The scent of Krishna's body is more maddening than the house called musk. And it surpasses the fragrance of the blue lotus. It enters the, women, the nose of all women and stays there. They cannot get rid of it. Krishna's lips are so sweet when can combined with the nectar of his smile. It attracts the hearts of all living entities. 
Krishna's smile is honored, very difficult to attain, therefore the devotees give up their life trying to achieve the sweetness of Krishna's smile. In this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would taste the sweetness of Krishna day and night. So, how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did bhajan? When we chant the holy name, we should try and become even one drop of this feeling. No? Otherwise, so many people we see they chant many years, but they cannot, they do not try to deeply enter the chanting. Therefore, they always remain on the surface of devotion, year, birth after birth. So, Guru Maharaj used to say, when you take your mother, you should forget. Don't just pull rope. Understand pulling rope? Do I have to show you? Mala is made of rope, right? Don't just... Oh, finish, thank God. Where's the television? Where's the remote control? So the Purimah said, don't just pull rope. Try and enter into the experience of the Holy Name. So if we chant, we should do chanting with quality. That means we're 23 hours, we're busy. Some time we have to take out. Sit and deeply try and experience what is this name of Krishna. So, how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would chant? One time someone said to Gurudev, Gurudev, when I chant, my mind, my mind wanders so much. Guru Mahaprabhu said, very good. Sometimes let your mind go to Radhakun. Sometimes let your mind go to Govardhan. <laughs> Sometimes let your mind go to Srinavat. But don't let your mind go outside Vrindavan. So at least some time every day we have to chant. Talk about the notes and how we can increase. He used to, he used to chant with a, a cloth over his head. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Why? The senses won't be going being distracted. You used to give some hints of chanting. Every day you should increase your chanting. Today you make a vow, pick up your mala, set the alarm clock. I will not move till I finish 20 minutes of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Next, then you do that. Oh, now I will move 10 minutes more. I will not move till I chant half an hour. In this way, one should gradually increase one's time of chanting and increase one's absorption. So, I to finish how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would chant. No? Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was always in the mood of separation from Krishna. He said, I achieved Krishna, but then I lost him. Therefore, my mind, sannyas means when we leave everything. Therefore, Mahaprabhu said, My mind took sannyas from my body. <laughs> when we sit and chant, we should also do that. Don't think I am in your life. No. Give your, <laughs> give your heart to Vrindavan. In some time, our mind and heart we should give fully to Krishna. So Mahaprabhu described, My mind took sannyas from my body. Mm-hmm. There's one, we saw when Guru would chant, He is not there. One time, one lady, Mulpakriti did it. She died a few years ago. I remember once I was sitting in Gurudev's room and I was, he was chanting. If you watch someone like that chant, then you get feelings. What does it mean to chant the Holy Name? Some devotees I saw, one, she was chanting 12, 14 hours. Eyes closed, 14 hours chanting. Not moving, not going bathroom, not taking one, just completely absorbed. 14 hours. <laughs> this means absorption in the Holy Name. So Guru was reading this Chaitanya Chattavrita. Must be thanks to him. And Guru was reading, reading. No? So when Guru would read or write, the whole world would be going around. He would never. You saw Guru writing? Maybe someone's dying in the next room? No problem. He was just reading. No? So this woman came in the room. Maharaj. Her Guru was Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj. She was trying to find about her Guru's life. <coughs> oh, Maharaj. When Prabhupada. You know, when he left home and to, he came to Mathura, he was maintaining his life by selling ointment, ringworm ointment. So he was trying, she was trying to ask him about that. And Guru was just reading. Two or three times she asked, he didn't even hear. He was just reading. Then finally, I had him like this. And I remember Guru's eyes. What? Gurudev on his morning walks, when he chants, and when someone would ask him a question in his walk, he would always go, What? Means coming back home. <laughs> coming back to this external sense perception. 
Then she asks these questions, she then he just ignored him and went back to read. <laughs> How many bottles of reading one of the would Prabhupada sell a day? Then Gurdjieff just ignored her, kept reading. And then she asked again, and I'm thinking, wow, she is persistent. Then she asked again, and Gurdjieff again, what? And she asked the third time, I was like, this is too much. Then Gurdjieff was said, try and understand. I am in Ras Lila with, with Krishna's Kaviraj. And you are trying to drag me to this world. No. And he went back to me. Then she asked again. The Guru was like, then he turned on, to try and understand. The glory of your Guru is not how many bottles of ring and ointment he would sell a day. The glory of your Guru is how he was always chasing these things. I remember these things. Now, these are like jewels. And then we remember this thing and we all have so much enthusiasm for chanting. So one devotee told me this story. Gurudev first came to Badger. He first came to Badger. He'd heard about Narayan Maharaj. He'd heard, actually he completely like retired from Hare Krishna Uru. I won't say anything. He'd sort of retired for 10 years then Gurudev was coming to America for the first time. Then, Someone rang him up. Guru wants to come to Badger. Narayan Maharaj, Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj wants to come to Badger. Will you host him? Yeah, sure, why not? I would like to serve the devotees. So as soon as he agreed to host Guru then he started getting phone calls. Narayan Maharaj is bad, he's a demon, he's this, he's that, he's this, he's that. People he hadn't heard of for 10 years were ringing him, like on the phone was ringing off the hook. Don't invite him, don't invite him, don't invite him. Then he was thinking, what should I do? Should I invite him? I never met him. He's good or bad, how do I know? Then he thought, anyway, I'll invite him and if anything happens, strange, Prabhupada will give me, Gurudev will give me intelligence, what to do? So he said, he was telling me, when Gurudev came out of the car, he was looking, okay, it looks good, no sorry, no lipstick. <laughs> Some people, they try to become gopis by doing all these things. So he was looking, it looks okay, till I shave heads. Hare Krishna, it looks the same thing as my Guru that was teaching. Then he thought, ah, I should, uh, he said, oh, Maharaj, ah, I feel very lucky you've come to my house. Guru said, yes, you are lucky. <laughs> <laughs> then he said a few days passed and he was here in the class, he was here in the class, and then some faith awoke. Yes, really he was a good devotee. Then he said he went into Guru's room to ask him a question. So Guru was chanting the holy name. So he opened the door quietly and went in. And Guru was there, Hare Krishna. And he watched him for like 15 minutes. He didn't move, just chanting. And that devotee said, he realized, this guy is in ecstatic trance. You know, he's in samadhi on Krishna. So it hit him like a ton of bricks and he blurted out, how long have you been like this? And Guru said, forever. <laughs> <laughs> Hare Krishna. So if we associate with persons like that, then our chanting, quality of our chanting will increase. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was absorbed in these ecstasies. What did he say? Sunu Banda Krishna Ramaduri Yanobe Muraman Chari Loka Vedadam Yogi Han Hoilo Bikari Krishna Lila Mandala, Sukha Sangha Kundala, Goriyache Sukhi Goriyache, Shri Kundala Konapari, Krishna Lao Taladori, Asa Juli Kandera Upa, Suno Banda Krishna Ramaduri, Mahapu catching the neck of Surup Dhamada. Oh, listen to, listen my friend, the sweetness of Krishna. Because of the desire to taste that sweetness, my mind has become a yogi. He's given up all social and religious duties and taken sannyas from my body. Now you see yogis in India, what do they wear? Big earrings. Then the yogi of my mind, what are his earrings? That is Ras Lila, Krishna's pastimes of dancing with the Braja Gopis. And who made that earring? That means my mind is always hearing of pastimes of Radha Krishna. 
Sekuntal Kanapari Trishthalo Talidori, like a yogi begs door to door. So the yogi with these earrings, he is moving and what is he begging back? Trishthalo Talidori. He's begging back his desire to, desire to taste that sweetness. Asajuli Kanderupai, like a begging bowl. He has a begging bowl carved out of his desire, his aspiration. And his begging bag is his expectations to achieve the nectar of Krishna. Chinta kanta udigai, duli vibhuti malamukai, ha ha Krishna pala pauta, udveg dvadas hoite, lobe julana mate, bhikshabhak shina kaliva. Chinta kari kanta udigai, this morning we discussed about that kunt, sorry, the kanta. What is that kanta? Chinta. He is always thinking of Krishna, that is his blanket. Duli vibhuti malindai. He is always covered in dust, the dust of Vrindavan. You know yogis, they cover themselves in ash, so at night time they don't feel cold. But the yogi in my mind is covering himself with the ash of Vrindavan. And what's he saying 24 hours a day? Ha ha Krishna Prabhat Uta. Day and night he's only crying, Ha Krishna, Ha Krishna. He's wearing bangles. What are those bangles? Dwadas Udveg Kori. He's wearing the twelve bangles, that is the twelve relationships with Krishna. The five primary ras and the seven secondary ras. They're his bangles, his decoration. And what's he doing? He has not found the sweetness of Krishna, therefore he is very thin. Bhikshabhag, <laughs> Shina Because he has not achieved the sweetness of Krishna, he is very thin, moving here and there. What is he doing? Vyas Sukari Yogi Gan Krishna Atma Nirajan. The great Vedic poets like Vyas, Suk, Sukadev Goswami, they have described Krishna, who is Krishna? Niranjan Atma. He is the Supreme Soul, Niranja. Hmm? Niranja, I'm too hard to explain. Therefore, Vrajtav, Yata Lilagan. Therefore, day and night, the yogi of my mind is meditating on that Niranja Atma, the Supreme Soul, as described by Sukh and Vyas. Bhagavad Adi Shastrigan, Kodiya Day and night, night, the yogi meditates on the pastimes described about Krishna by Sukadev Goswami. Day and night he is only reading the Bhagavad. Therefore, Das India Shishakori he has ten disciples. What are the ten disciples of the yogi mind? The ten senses. Just like the disciples should go out and bring collection and bring back to Guru. So the ten senses are moving everywhere trying to get the sweetness of Krishna. Thus, the mystic yoga in my mind has assumed the name Mahabal. Mahabal means madman. And he has made the set disciples of my ten senses. My mind has gone to Vrindavan with my senses, and only my body is here. Thus, in Vrindavan, the yoga in my mind goes door to door with his disciples, and he's begging from the Brijabhasi to give me the sweetness of Krishna. So in this way Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spent his time. When my mind could not achieve Krishna, he became depressed and took up meditation. In the same way, Mahaprabhu spent his time chanting the Holy Name. Of course, we are not on that level. But still, hearing some desire, at least sometime early in the morning when I wake up, if I chant my Harinam or I chant my mantras, I should be like that for some time. Some absorption will be there. And that much we're absorbed in Krishna, that much Krishna reveals himself to us. Therefore, our chanting should be of such a quality we feel that we are increasing day by day. Then we can understand we are doing bhajan properly. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained both the philosophy of Krishna and the sweetness of Krishna. If you get both of them together, then one's body will become very strong. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave all instruction to Sanatana Goswami at Priyag. 
at Varanasi, sorry, and then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu returned back to Jagannath Puri. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu stayed there for the next 18 years of his pastimes. So, tomorrow morning, we'll try and discuss something of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's final 18 years. You can imagine how much of Chaitanya Charamrita, if one hears these pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how it tastes in the sweetness of Krishna, then we'll understand very easily the Srimad Bhagavatam and other devotional scriptures. No? If we dear brothers and sisters, no? if one remembers Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, even impossible things are easily accomplished. And if one forgets Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, even very easy things become impossible. Yeah. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we should always see him like Shiksha Guru, because he revealed this process of chanting the Holy Name with absorption to the souls of this world, Therefore, there's a nice verse. Yataya tagore padare vinde vindikti bhakti krita punya parapi tata tata pari vidya kasmad radha padam buja sadam buja dhuli. My dear brother, just approach the feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is very merciful. He never sees who is qualified or unqualified. If you just come to him, you're going to all these things he does. Therefore, one who comes to him will definitely achieve the service of Radha that is our parodia, the one point of service to Radhika. Therefore, Asasya Dasya Shabbatam. Oh Radharani, I only have one desire, that is somehow to achieve your direct self. So one who comes to Gauranga, because Gauranga is in the mood of Radharani, his complexion is Radharani, all his activities and speeches under the influence of Radharani's influence, one who comes to Gauranga means to come to Radhika. And who is Radhika? Krishna Sukhi Vila Sarani. She is the treasure chest of all Krishna's sweetness. Therefore, I have spoken high things, I am like a vulture. <laughs> vulture flies very high, but he's only looking for dead bodies in this world. The same way we are speaking very high things, but uh, still we are so much foolish, we are looking for so called material enjoyment in this world. Therefore, by speaking these things, I am hoping I am also developing desire for higher aspiration. And anything good I said this seven days, that is mercy of Gurudev. Anything bad I said, that is my own contribution. Shri Guru Maharaj ki jai, Sachinandan Gaura Hari ki jai, Gopremanandi. Hemalata, did you stand up? This is Hemalata, so today she took her arm. So, so question, all the devotees, I have no power, so all the devotees, they please bless her. No? Think she is fabulous. Okay, so any problems? So all the other ones, she took any station with them. Okay, they all know. We already announced them. They know. <laughs> so now I'll ask you, please don't go. Lord Maharaj. So tomorrow is last class, uh, eight o'clock to nine thirty, and then uh, thank.